In this video, we're looking at photographing long-tailed tit. So here I'm going to show you the setup that I use for that. So we're going to look at two ways of photographing them. One, portrait shots where they're on this lichen-covered branch, but also in flight when they fly from here to this setup that I've got here. What this is, is a glass jar in a wooden plywood frame. And in here, what I've actually got is what's attracting long-tailed tits. Long-tailed tits will come quite happily to sunflower hearts and things like that and seed feeders. What they really like here is this bird paste what I'm making. Basically all it is is a cheap supermarket loaf, melted lard, some hot water and some sunflower hearts. And I make it into a paste and I put it in here and I put it all around here. The reason for the plywood is so that the birds can't actually just sit on here and eat it. They can't reach that from there. The only way they're going to get at that food is to actually fly in there and land on that. What I look for here is when the birds are on this branch because then it's more or less in a straight line as they're flying from here to the food. And I will pre-focus roughly here. Sort of, I'll put a stand there, pre-focus manually. I'll be using Pro Capture High, which on the OM1 will give me 120 frames a second. So I'm going to get a lot of shots as it's flying in from there. With manual focus on the Pro Capture High, it only got to be a little bit behind, a little bit in front, and it's slightly out of focus. But if you take enough pictures, you're going to get some good ones here. I can do straight portrait shots here. It's quite nice when they actually land on this branch. The background is probably something like about 40, 50 foot away. So shooting wide open on the 300 mil lens, this is gonna give me a really nice diffused natural looking background. I would only have to move this setup slightly to get a different background and I'll show you the problems there now. So what I've done here is I've actually moved it all over slightly. Where I was photographing down that way, I had a really nice clear background, but here we're about nine, eight or nine foot away from that tree. And that will give you a very, very messy background. And there are times when you're photographing in gardens where you've got sort of very, very cluttered background, fences, uh, brick walls, things like that. And then that ruins the picture. So you've got to try and find some way of actually changing the background. And I'll show you what I use. So what I'm using here is a sheet of painted hardboard plywood there. And I'm supporting it in a Black & Decker workmate. He raises it up so that it's off the ground and it's a nice height. And when I focus on here, that background is probably something like about five foot away. Shooting wide open at f4, that's going to give me a reasonably natural looking background. You'll obviously, looking at the pictures, can see what it is. But if I hadn't told you, you wouldn't have known. Don't, don't try and use this on a windy day. It's quite thin plywood and it will blow it over. So on the days when there's not wind, use it. What you can do is actually paint both sides. This one, I've got this green and brown, orangey mottled effect, which looks quite nice. On the other side, I've got just a, a plain green background. Green just looks a little bit unnatural, uh, unless it's, you know, mottled. I'm the world's worst painter, but this is quite easy to do. You don't have to be great at painting there. But it does give you the advantage. If there was a, a fence post there or a brick wall there, I could put this in front of it, providing it's about five or six foot away, it will give me a clean backdrop. And the advantage of this branch is that when they land there, they're going to fly more or less in a straight line to the, to the food. Hopefully I should get some good shots. So now I'm going to show a few video clips and still images of long tail tits taken using this setup. All the slow motion video clips are taken using 120 frames per second slow motion setting on the OM1. In slow motion, it does show how the long tail tits will often fly and hover momentarily just before landing on the glass bird paste. 
Using Pro Capture makes taking these shots of the birds in flight relatively easy. When I set this up, I focus manually about 5 inches in front of the bird paste. And when I see a bird hovering or flying in, I fully depress the shutter button. To manually focus, I place something between the branch and the bird paste. I usually stick a small twig in the bird paste and use focus peaking to fine tune the focus. Once I have set the focus correctly, I remove the twig and I'm ready to start taking pictures. Using Pro Capture High, I am able to get a whole series of shots of the birds as they fly in. Because I'm shooting wide open at f4, depth of field is quite shallow. You only have to have the bird an inch or so in front or behind the point of focus and the image will be slightly out of focus. Generally speaking though, when the long-tailed tits fly to the bird pace from the branch, they usually do so in a straight line and you should get a series of shots that are pin sharp. Shooting on ProCap High does mean that you will have a large number of pictures to sort through after you've downloaded them onto your computer. Using Lightroom, it's quite easy to quickly and aggressively go through the images and select and save only the best shots and delete all the rest. When in Photoshop, it's quite easy to crop out the glass and bird paste out of the edge of the frame. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Please check out my other YouTube videos and subscribe to my channel to be notified of future uploads. Thanks for watching.